Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your head. If you feel any tenderness, you just let me know, okay? Okay. <laughs> so now I'm palpating her head, looking at her hair color, which looks to be dyed. <laughs> it is very soft. It feels like she might have just washed it, hopefully. Um, infestations, I don't see anything like that. No scars, I don't feel any masses. Did anything feel tender at all? No. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate her temporal artery. And I'm also gonna go ahead and palpate all your lymph nodes now at this time. If you feel any tenderness at all, you just let me know. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and check your cranial nerve five. So what I'm gonna have you do is clench down in your jaw and I'm gonna go ahead and palpate. You're not feeling any tenderness or anything? No. Perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly touch you and you just let me know if you can feel it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. All yes. right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and check cranial nerve seven. So I'm gonna have you do a big smile for me, frown, raise your eyebrows. <laughs> That was an interesting frown. <laughs> Very good. Puff your cheeks out, go real big, and make the duck lips. Perfect. So cranial nerve seven is intact. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to your ear. So first things first is I'm just going to look at your outer ear. Make sure, look at the size and the position. Make sure that they are in line where they're supposed to be, which they are. Now I'm going to use this light just to look at the auditory canal, which it looks nice and clean. <laughs> We're gonna look at the other side. Ooh, a little bit of wax, but it's okay. <coughs> then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the pinna. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't want that. I'm sorry. Everything feels great though. You don't feel any, no tenderness or anything? Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and check your cranial nerve eight. So first things I'm gonna do is do a whisper test on you. So you're gonna go ahead and put your finger over your tragus on this side and I'm gonna whisper a number to you and you're gonna let me know what that number is, okay? Once we're done, we're gonna swap sides. <laughs> so I'll make sure I'm scanning a good ways about. 11. Okay, and then go ahead and switch to the other side. 13. 13, so that is perfect. And next we're gonna do the Weber test which I have my tool, so I'm going to strike it, and when you stop feeling it, you let me know. Okay, I don't feel it anymore. And then we're going to put it back here. I don't feel it anymore. Can you still hear it? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then we'll do it to the other side. I don't feel it anymore. Don't feel it anymore. You can still hear it. Can you hear it? Perfect. So that was the Weber test. Now we're going to do the Rhine test. So I'm going to strike it again. I'm going to put it right here. And when you stop feeling it, I'm going to pull it away and see if you can still hear it, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Can you still hear it? Perfect. <laughs> now one more time. Okay. All right, so that was the rind test. So now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. So I'm going to inspect the lashes, the brows, and the fissures, which everything looks good. She has eyelashes as well as, well as eyebrows. And then I'm going to inspect the sclera, the conjunctive eye, looking for the color, which the sclera is white, and then it is pink, and there's no discharge, which is also good. I can also notice that she has some contacts in. So now I'm going to check her gross visual acuity. And if you can read, hold this and let me know what this says right here. Head and face. And then go ahead and cover your left eye. Head mm -hmm. and face. And go ahead and cover your right eye. Head and face. All right. And now we are going to move on to the snail test. 
So I'll fold this from far away. Can you tell me what that letter is? N. And then go ahead and cover your left eye. What is that letter? G. And cover your right eye. R. Perfect. So Maddie has 2020 vision right now, which you have contacts in, correct? Yes. All right. So now we are going to go ahead and move on to cranial nerve two. So what I'm going to do is have you cover your left eye. And in the distance, I'm going to show you a number, and you'll tell me what that is. And we're going to check your peripheral vision, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me what that number is. Three. Four. Five. All right. And then go ahead and switch. Two. Three. Four. Perfect. So our peripheral vision is intact. So now we're going to go ahead and check cranial nerve three. So I'm going to check her pupillary response to light. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to look at her pupil sizes, which are four right now. They are equal round, and then we'll see if they're reactive to light, so keep me a little bit bright. Perfect. All right, so they are reactive to light, and I did it twice because the first time you're checking just this size response, and the second time you're checking to see if the other side will react as well. <clears throat> so now I'm going to check three, four, and six cranial nerves. I'm going to hold this pen light far away. You're going to just follow the pen light, not moving your head, just moving your eyes. And I'm going to look to see if there's any shakiness in your eyes and the ability to do so, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and follow. Nine, I'm doing the six cardinal fields of gazes. Perfect. So the cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 are all intact. I'm also going to check cranial nerve 3 for accommodation. So I'm going to move this in, and you're not going to move your head or anything like that. We're just going to see if your eyes can accommodate to something moving closer, okay? Perfect. All right. Next, I'm going to go ahead and check the red reflex. Does look to be intact. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to the nose. So I'm just going to look at the nose to make sure that it is thin line and straight, which it is. I'm going to check for nasal patency. Looks like it is very patient. Can you breathe through your nose as well? Good. And now I'm just going to palpate your maxillary and frontal sinuses. Do you feel any pressure, tenderness, anything like that? What I want you to do is I want you to lift your arm up as high as you can go to the sky. Right. So right now you are at 158. And then can I help you move it just a little bit more? Is that comfortable? It's okay. So now you are at 163. And then, yeah, just back up. <laughs> this next exercise I'm going to have you do, I want you to sit up as tall as you can and then stick your arm back to the back of the room as far as it goes, okay? This is testing your shoulder extension. Right now you are at 58. Can I move about just a little farther? Tell me when to stop. It's good. Now you got 65, zero to 65. This next exercise I'm going to have you do is reach your arm up all the way to your head to see how high it'll go, okay? Right now you are at zero to 155. I'm just gonna move it a little farther up. Sixty zero to 160. Next exercise, I'm going to have you stick your arm out like that, keeping this elbow parallel to the ground and seeing how far you can move your hand down to the floor, okay? So right now you are at 70 degrees. All right, and you're at like pretty much a normal level for range of motion, so I'm not going to possibly assist you anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next exercise, same position, you're going to keep your arm like this, but this time your hand is going up towards the ceiling.
the crumb. You were at 72. Can I assist you a little further? You got to 75 that time. All right, I'm going to have you do a see first of all how far you can extend your arm flat. So just go ahead and put your arm back as far as you can. I'm pretty sure yours is. 180, and then next I'm going to have you take that arm and flex it as far as you can towards your bicep, right? Good. You got to 140 degrees, zero to 140. This next exercise I'm going to have you do, stick out your hand just like that, and then I'm going to have you rotate it so your palm is up. or 78, and then I'm just going to push you down a little farther, and we got to 85. Okay, similar to the last exercise, I'm going to have you start in the same position, but this time I want your palm going down to the floor, okay? You are at 85 right now, and I'm just going to push on it a tiny bit more for you. Now you are at 90, so normal range of motion. Good. This next exercise I'm going to have you do is see how far you can bend your wrist towards your forearm this way, okay? And you are at... 80 degrees, so you are at, right, that's what I was saying, that 80 degrees is the full range of motion, so I'm not going to push you any further. So as similar to the last one, I'm going to have you start in the same position, or you could cup your hand like that, and then see how far you can bring this part of your hand back towards this forearm, okay? Okay. Right now you are at 50, can I move you a little further? Oh, I know this part. Now you are at 55. Next thing I'm going to have you do is set your hand flat on the table and see how far you can move your hand towards the side of your forearm, just gliding across the table. You are at 25 degrees. So I'm just going to leave it at that. You're past the normal range of motion, so that's good. Okay, next thing, similar to the last time, but this time your hand's going to glide across this way, okay? You are at zero to 40 degrees right now, and that is past the full range of motion, so I'm just gonna leave it up. What I'm gonna have you do is rest your hand like this, and then see how far you can bring your fingers in like that, okay? You can just keep your thumb wherever it's comfortable. You are at zero to 95, and that's past the normal range of motion, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right, now, same position right here, but this time instead of your fingers going in this way, I wanna see how far they can go back like that, okay? You are at 30 degrees, zero to 30 degrees. Right. This next one, I'm going to start with your fingers together, and then I'm going to measure how far you can spread your fingers as far as they can, okay? So start in like that. Okay, go ahead. All right, you are at zero to 15 degrees. And is that as far as they'll go? Yeah, zero to 15. This next one, I'm going to have you start all the way flat like that, and then see how far you can bend this joint in towards your palm like that. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay. 
Um, yes, you are at 110 degrees, and that is, yeah, that's max range of motion, so you're good, right? I'm going to have you start with your hands straight out again, and this time, actually, I'll have you bring your hands in like that, and I'm just going to measure this little angle right here of this joint. You are at 90 degrees, which is farther than the normal range of motion. Next exercise I'm going to have you do is start with your hands flat and then see how far you can bring your thumb out to the side, just like that. You are at 65 degrees. Normal is 50 degrees, so you're set. All right, the next thing I'm going to measure is I'm going to bring your hands in like that, and I want to see how far you can bring your thumb in just like that, okay? Um, go ahead. You are at 75 degrees, and that is far past range of, normal range of motion. So the next thing I'm going to measure, I want you to bring your thumb in as far as you can, just like that measure this joint right here. Okay. You got flexible little thumbs. You are at 65. The normal range of motion is 0 to 50. You got 0 to 65. Okay. All right, next joint I'm going to test. This is our last one. I'm going to have you flex this thumb in as far as it'll go, and I'm going to measure this joint right here on your thumb. to assess your grip strength to see if that would it'll help us get an idea of what the problem is at the gym just to see if it's a range of motion issue or if it's a grip strength issue and then we're going to do three trials of this so you're just going to squeeze it one try i'm going to mark it down another time i'll write it down and then the third time same thing okay we'll just grab onto that and squeeze it as hard as you can okay you can let go all right you are at 75 Try it again. Oh, that time you are at 78. Third time's a charm. Oh, that one wasn't great. <laughs> 60 that time. <gasps> what? I know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. It was so nice to have you today. Um, I'm going to do a cranial nerve exam. It should take less than 10 minutes. Is it okay if I touch your face? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. To start, we're going to test cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. Um, follow my finger with your eyes and don't move your head, okay? All right. Now we're going to check your eyes for dilation. All right. Perfect. Um, and then for cranial nerve 5, for range of motion, can you just open and close your mouth? Okay. And then to test the strength, can you open your mouth and don't let me close it? Okay, and then close your mouth, don't let me open it. Alright. And then I'm just going to feel right here, and if you could just, um, clench your jaw. Alright, perfect. I can feel the muscles. Um, and now... I'm going to test V1, V2, and V3 um, with this soft and sharp object. So if you, I could just see your hands so you know. Okay, this is soft and this is hard. All right, so close your eyes and tell me whenever you see it, okay? Or feel it. Hard. Soft. Hard. Soft. Hard. 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 Okay, now for cranial nerve 7, upper face range of motion, can you just raise and then lower your eyebrows? Alright, and then for strength, can you lower your eyebrows and then don't let me pull them up. Do it again. Okay, um, for lower face range of motion, can you puck your lips and then smile and then do it again. And then one more time. Alright, and then for the lower face strength, um, I'm going to put this in your mouth, and then I'm going to push your cheek out, um, and then just move it back in, okay? So 
if I move back in. Can you move? <laughs> okay. Looks good to me. And then um, for lower face strength, um, which also test cranial nerve 10, can you puff out your cheeks with air? And then I'm going to push it in and don't let the air come out. Okay. Um, and also your facial symmetry looks good. Um, and now to test cranial nerves 9 and 10, it's going to be a cough reflex instead of a gag reflex. So um, if I were to do the gag reflex, that would um, test for cranial nerve 9 motor and 10 sensory, but the cough is just going to test 10 motors. So if you could give me a strong cough. <coughs> okay. Um, and for the range of motion, can you open your mouth and stick your tongue out as far as you can and say, ah, 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 ah. Okay. Vocal cords look good. Um, and the intraoral cavity looks healthy and good. So for the next one, um, we are going to test, um, cranial nerve 11 range of motion. So if you could just shrug your shoulders. Okay. Um, if for strength, you could put your shoulders up and don't let me push them down. Okay. Um, for range of motion, turn your head left and then turn it right. And then to test strength again, can you turn your head left and then don't let me push it. Okay. And then turn it right. Don't let me push it. Okay, and then for the VP seal um, with the air in the cheeks, that was done with cranial nerve 7, so we don't need to test that. And then also, um, for what we just did, I could see the bulk of your sternocleidomastoid, so that looks good. And then for cranial nerve 12, for range of motion, can you stick out your tongue, move it up and down. Okay, and then again. And then side to side, one more time. All right, and then for strength, um, keep your tongue in your mouth, put it on your cheek, and then don't even push it in. Okay, other side, and then one more time, and then again. Okay, um, and then for lower, we checked that with your lip seal when we did the cheek puff, so I think you're good to go. That's all for the cranial nerve exam. Um,